Hey everyone and welcome to my top 10 favorite character video. I am so excited to tell you guys my top 10 favorite characters. I have been working really hard on this list and I am really excited to see what you guys think. I thought that um, we would start my videos off from now on with a quote from a character. Um, I thought that would be a really fun idea just to kind of give a more of an intro to my videos. So my character quote of the day is, quote, I know how to run without you holding my hand, end quote. And that is from Ray from The Force Awakens. Um, so let's just get right into it. Counting up from 10, 10 being the least most favorite and one being my favorite character ever. Um, so let's just get right into it. So starting off number 10, we have Peregrine Took or Pippin Took from the Lord of the Rings trilogy played by Billy Boyd. So I have always loved this character. He's always been my favorite hobbit from <laughs> Ever. I think he is such a good character. Um, I was drawn to his loyalty and to his friends and the Fellowship. Um, especially in the Fellowship of the Rain, he was never meant to go on that journey. And, you know, they just stumbled into each other and he just tagged along and he ended up bringing a lot to the Fellowship. Um, considering he was the youngest of the four hobbits. He grew so much into himself as a person. He's so brave and courageous and isn't scared to go where no hobbit has gone before. He became a knight of Gondor, which was granted by Aragorn. He became Thane of the Shire and Guard of Citadel. If I butcher that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I love how Billy Boyd played him as well. He was young, adventurous, positive, heroic, and just kind of the positivity of the group. I think he really held the group together, and even when they got captured, I don't think his spirits were ever super damaged. He was always bubbly, happily, happy-go-lucky, and he's just always been my favorite of the Four Hobbits. And he never lets anything get the better of him. And him and Mary are just such a good trio. And I just love Pippin. So let me know what you think of that character. Or any character that I mention. Um, feel free to comment your thoughts, opinions. After I'm done. After you watch this. Let's keep going. Number nine. We have Will Turner from Pirates of the Caribbean. Played by Orlando Bloom. So Will has always been my favorite character from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I think that he... Okay, the first movie, the very first, the original Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, it worked so well because it was centered around Will and Elizabeth and not Jack Sparrow. I love Jack Sparrow. He's a great character, but I don't think the movie should have been centered around him. I think he works better as a side character because it aids in the comedy and it helps the story move with him as a side character. But him as a main character, it just, it took away from it. And it was just like, oh, the silly pirate, you know, not, you know, shading on Jack because I love Jack. But I think it works so much better with Will because he is so down to earth. He is <clears throat> heroic. He knows what he wants. He wants to be with Elizabeth and nothing is going to prevent him from doing that. I love, especially in the first movie, how he's so against being a pirate, but he was born to be a pirate. Like, he's so against it, but everything he does just brings him one step closer to piracy. And I just love it. I love how that pans out for him. And I love how he just ends up embrace embracing it without a really big moment. That was like i'm a pirate now he just kind of became one slowly over the storyline and i really like how they did that i think orlando bloom is a fantastic actor orlando bloom is one of my first favorite actors so he always has a place in my heart um yeah i've always loved when i think that his fate 
they did him dirty I think I think his fate he didn't deserve that he deserved so much more because he did so much in aid of the company and the crew and everyone um I'm happy he didn't die but also he's kind of not living so it's just a big blah blah, blah. but yeah I think his fate his fate was not my favorite. I always am sad when I watch the third movie and yeah. But number nine, Will Turner. Love him. At number eight, we have Merida of Dunbrock from Brave, played by Kelly McDonald. So as I've stated multiple times, Brave is my favorite Pixar movie. I love Merida so much. From the first time I watched Brave, how many ever years ago, I fell in love with her. She is just high spirited, determined, and everything that a young girl should look up to, I think. She knows what she wants, first off. She knows what she wants. She doesn't want to be a typical girl. She doesn't want all of the kingdom's responsibility responsibilities to fall on her, and she doesn't want to get married. And I think to have a Disney princess say that is pivotal. It's pivotal. Um, sh and she doesn't need a man to save her or help her, which is everything. I, I love Disney, okay? And I don't want to trash Disney. And I know, like, she is the only Disney princess, I think, out of Disney that does not need someone to help her and that is insane even Moana Moana needs Maui who is a man to guide her which is understandable totally understandable like and even like the more modern the Disney princesses get like Rapunzel she needed Flynn but like that's because she's never been out in the universe before I would need someone to help me too so I'm not really I don't want to shade any other of the characters but Merida is just so different from all of them um and I think that's what makes her my favorite because she's different and she doesn't want to appeal to those stereotypes of her time which is so cool because they're in like ancient Scotland and that is huge she's also a Scottish princess which we have never seen and I loved her story I think her story about fate and destiny and being who you want to be is so it's so inspirational I think it's also important with her character to show that kids and parents don't always have to get along. I mean, a lot of the Disney princesses don't get along with their parents. Either they don't have parents or their parents aren't really their parents or they just disagree in some way. But I think Merida being like, hey, this isn't what I want for me. This is what you want for me. And I don't want that, if that makes sense. And I just love her and I think she's such a good character and her animation is wonderful I love her hair it's so different and I love Merida so let's keep going <laughs> number seven we have Scarlett Benoit from the Lunar Chronicles series she comes into the series in the second book which is called Scarlett um, and those were written by Marissa Meyer so if you don't know what the Lunar Chronicles series are that's okay they're really good books. There's four books in the series and each one of them introduces a new character as you go. And they are all loosely based on a fairy tale. I won't tell you which ones. It's not really a spoiler, but I just won't tell you. <laughs> so Scarlet comes in in the second book and the second book is focused around her life. And I love this character. She is fiery, passionate, not afraid to speak her mind. Can we see a trend that's going on? Um, she's a female pilot, which is really, really cool. She's good with hand-on-hand -hand combat, which is really cool. She's not the best at it, but like she can do it, if that makes sense. She acts first and thinks later and never apologizes for any of it. She is very headstrong and just kind of goes with what she thinks is right. And she has flaws. And I think that's important in a character to be able to see her flaws reflect her strengths. So for Scarlet, because she is so strong-willed and passionate and a sort of act first, think later person, that also reflects in her flaws because not a lot of people like her. She can kind of be arrogant or um, 
come off as like rude sometimes and I think that's interesting to be able to see a character that is war with her flaws and her strengths because they're kind of interlaced with each other but she does get along with a lot of people really well because of her mature way of thinking she thinks very maturely and she doesn't really judge people when she meets them um and i just i really love her and her journey is so interesting and i highly recommend this book series again it's called the lunar chronicle series the books are cinder scarlet cress and winter written by marissa meyer m-y-e-r and they are so good if you need a book series to read i highly 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 recommend you check this one out so different so original it's like a science fantasy type of series and it's really good scarlet is my favorite character and if you've read that book series comment down below and tell me who your favorite character is because i would love to know let's keep going number six we have jacob kowalski from fantastic beast played by dan fogler we have a muggle as a main character in a wizarding world movie guys i cannot believe it. i love the fantastic beast movies i think that it's so interesting to be able to see not the british side of the wizarding world not that they aren't amazing but it's really cool to be able to see the different cultures that the wizarding worlds have we get to see america we got to see france and the main character is british and um the other side characters are american so we get to see that contrast between them and i really enjoy it i think it is such a good way to continue the wizarding world franchise and it was so much fun to be able to see a harry potter movie in theater i never got to see the harry potter movies in the theater because i was too young at the time and by the time i got into them they had, they were already out on disc um so when i saw the first fantastic beast movie in theaters i cried it was beautiful and it was just such an experience and i was so grateful that i had got to have one um even as like an older teenager at the time jacob kowalski i love that we get to see a muggle in the wizarding world um because we connect with him so much because we are muggles we are no magics and we don't get to experience magic and i think to be able to have a character that is so wowed by everything like this is not normal and just is so blown away by the stuff that wizards can do is so wonderful because we connect with that so much that's what we're watching we're watching these this world that we are so enthralled with and jacob just brings that closer to home if you know what i'm talking about so i love him i love his character and his loyalty to newt is so good and his relationship with queenie is so cute and I think they're both oddballs in their own way. I mean, she is a different kind of witch. She can read people's minds and that's not necessarily normal for wi witches and wizards. And Jacob is a muggle living in the wizarding world. So he's, of course, an outcast in this all. And they come together and bond over that. And I think it's so cute. I love them as a couple. I think they work really well together. And I'm so anxious to see what their future is going to be with how the last movie the crimes of grindelwald left off it's gonna be a little interesting um but yeah i love jacob i love that they gave us a non-magic character that isn't the dursleys no shade against the dursleys but they're horrible people so we didn't like them in the harry potter series so we think it's really fun to be able to like a muggle character so much so that's kind of why he's on this list just because i really identify with him and i i feel his wonder and i relate so much to him and i just love him also dan fogler plays him so well and he's so funny and let's keep going <laughs> number five we have kylo ren or ben solo from 
the Star w the newer Star Wars movie is played by Adam Driver. And yes, I know, shade me if you want, but I love this character. Um, so I have, ever since I saw, okay, The Force Awakens is one of the best Star Wars movies. Don't come for me, but that's my opinion. Ever since I saw that movie, I absolutely fell in love with Kylo Ren because I knew that he was going to have an interesting story. So I'm going to kind of talk freely and openly. So if you haven't seen the new Star Wars movies, The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker, I would maybe skip past this character um, because I'm going to talk openly about all the stuff that happens. So if you don't want spoilers, please don't watch this because I don't want to spoil anything for you. Um, I'm also going to talk about the original Star Wars movies as well, just so you guys know. Let's keep going. Kylo Ren, I knew that he was going to have an interesting story arc because he is the son of Han Solo and Princess Leia and the grandson of Darth Vader. So I never was a fan of Darth Vader's arc. It was done really well, but it just wasn't, I didn't connect with it. I didn't feel it for him because in the prequels, he just, it, it happened too quickly and I wasn't sympathetic for what was happening because I didn't feel like there was a good enough reason. He was just being manipulated by everyone around him. Anakin, we're talking about Anakin. He was just being manipulated by everyone around him and I thought, I think that it shows his weakness if he's able to be manipulated so much that it just turns him, I don't know, I might not have a good enough opinion but I never enjoyed Anakin's arc from good to Darth Vader. I didn't think it was justified. I didn't think it was done well and It just didn't interest me and then him as Darth Vader We never saw his arc because he always had a mask on So we didn't get to see what was happening inside his mind because we didn't get to see his face So I wasn't sympathetic with that either because in the in the last one name I don't remember <laughs> He, you know, saves Luke, but we don't get that internal thought because he's just panning back and forth to him. But we don't see his thoughts, so I never connected with that either. But in The Force Awakens, Kylo Ren, we get to see his mask on and his mask off. So I knew from the end of that movie that his arc was going to be something that Star Wars has never, had never done before because he kind of, he went backwards. And that's super, really interesting. So Kylo Ren's story begins, he's training with Luke and Luke sees the dark side in him and he gets so scared that he tries to kill him. He tries to just, he lets his emotions get the better of him and he tries to kill him. If I was in Kylo's position, I would have done the same exact thing. Okay, so he gets probably, he's terrified one side is trying to kill him, he's gonna obviously go to the side who's not trying to kill him, who his grandfather was like this god of Darth Sith Lords. Obviously, that's the logical path to choose if the good side is trying to kill you. I would do that too, probably. I don't know. But, so he goes to the dark side and he's obviously trying to live up to his grandfather's legacy because at this time, that's the only person that he trusts and like knows that they're not against him. And I know everyone is always like, oh, he just has anger issues and he's just like a little boy and he's just dumb. I disagree. I think that his anger issues are totally valid because if I was on this side that literally would kill anyone the second that they thought that they weren't doing well enough, I would have anger issues too if something went wrong. Okay, so like, Ray escapes. Other stuff happens where he just lashes out in anger. He is scared, guys. He is afraid because he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know if he's on the right side. He feels this pull between good and evil all the time because he doesn't know who he is. For all he knows, the light side wants him dead. The dark side is not very friendly. Basically, he is only there because they want his power. He's powerful. 
and Snoke just wants him for his power. So I think that <sighs> Kylo Ren is totally justified in everything he does if you look at the logistics of his life. So we see him in The Force Awakens and he is a great villain. I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's just afraid of the people higher up of him, I think. That he's totally justified and his connection with Rey, I think, is very, very beneficial because they're the same. They both have that pull against light and dark and they both don't know who they are. So for them to connect, I think that was a really ingenious thing done by the Star Wars franchise because it makes so much sense. We have Kylo, who's on the dark side currently, who's feeling the pull toward the light, and then we have Rey, who is on the light side, who's feeling a pull toward the dark for some reason, and they both don't know who they are. Perfect, perfect connection with each other. So and they kind of team up, and they kind of have some battles, and at this point, Kylo is just kind of slowly starting to realize who he wants to be and he he knows that Rey can help him he saves her he saves her life and I think that moment is so epic because he finally understands that I'm on the light side I can be like my father and I can do this and I don't think that their kiss was a love kiss I think it was a thank you kiss I think it was them finally relieving all of these emotions with each other because they had been fighting for so long and it just ended they finished they beat the bad guy and I think it was more of just gratitude that they're both alive and I think Ray somehow knew what was happening and what was going on and I think it was just a last like goodbye thank you I don't think it was romantic I don't think that they had any romance. I think it was just this strong connection with each other. And then he gave his life to save hers. And I think that is such a redemption for, you know, all the people he killed, all the bad that he did in the dark. I think that saving someone's life like that is such a good redemption. Anyway, that was a long conversation. I love Kylo Ren. He is my fifth favorite character and let's keep going. <laughs> Number four, we have Joe March from Linda Women, played by Winona Ryder slash Saoirse Ronan. I haven't seen the original, I've only seen the 2019 version, so I'm going to talk about Saoirse, Ronan, Saoirse Ronan's version, but I wanted to credit Winona Ryder because I know that she did play her. I love Joe March. I think... Characters who are always writers are always very interesting because they are always against society in some way. And I think that's really interesting and I really like that. Um, she is such a good character. She is so kind, so thoughtful, and she will do anything for her family because she loves them. And I think she is so relatable because she fears what every person fears at some point in their life. She fears being alone. She fears not being successful. She fears that she has wasted potential and she just wants to do good. But she doesn't want to be tied down as a wife. She wants to do stuff with her life. She wants to be a writer. She wants to publish books. But she doesn't want to be alone. And I think that is totally respectable, especially given in her time frame. For her to be so against the norms is just, ah, oh, it's just amazing. And I just love her. And I think Saoirse Ronan did a fantastic job playing her. Um, and I really want to see the original. And yeah, number four, ladies and gentlemen, Joe March. Number three, we have Harley Quinn played by so many people. Credit to Marco Robbie for playing the first ever live version, but there have been so many. So, I've always loved Harley Quinn as a DC character. She is so quirky. She's just fun. Like, I know she's psychotic and, like, insane, and she's with the Joker, which is not a healthy relationship, but she is so independent, 
but she just doesn't know it. And I think Birds of Prey did a wonderful job at showing that she can be independent without the Joker. She doesn't need the Joker. She can handle herself. She can take care of herself just fine. Um, and I think Birds of Prey really opened that up to not only the, the character, but to us as well. I think Harley Quinn has been done dirty a lot. Um, she's been sexualized a lot, and I think that she doesn't need to be at all. I think that Birds of Prey did a good job. Especially in like the video games, she's just this sex object, and I don't think she needs to be like that. I love the classic black and white jumpsuit with the gest jester like hat. I love that look. I think that look is iconic and she doesn't like it rocks for her. I love Harley Quinn. I I don't even I can't really explain why. I just am so drawn to her character as a whole. I just I can't explain it. She's just my favorite DC character. Um and I just I really just think it's because she is so different and so and she's not afraid to be herself I just her look in general is just so creative and always have just been in love with her number two we have loki the god of mischief son of odin slash lothi if i butchered that i'm sorry played by the marvelous tom hiddleston so i love loki so much Loki's arc in the MCU has been so iconic and I just love it. I just absolutely positively love it. Um, in There's going to be spoilers for the MCU, just saying I'm going to be talking openly about it. So if you don't want MC spo MCU spoilers from the Thor series and the Avengers series, I would skip past this as well. <laughs> Okay, so I have always loved Loki, even from the first Thor movie, I thought that he was kind of a hidden gem character, um, and I think that he is totally justified in everything he's done, because Odin is a piece of garbage, guys. I do not like Odin. <sighs> he's a horrible father and a horrible person, and I just don't understand. So Loki is technically the son of Lothe, who is an ice giant, frost giant, who the Asgardians have been at war with forever, okay? So there's a quote from Loki in the first Thor movie where he's Odin finally tells him his lineage and Loki says something along the lines of, so I am the monster that parents tell their children. I am the monster that parents tell their children about at night. Something along those lines. I don't know if that makes sense, but he says something like that. And I think that is golden because that hits Odin right where it counts. Because literally the frost giants are known as monsters to the Asgardians. And Loki is not wrong. They educate their children. They educate their people about how bad the frost giants are. And for Loki to learn that he is one of them is so horrible. I don't know how Loki ever forgave him because he does he forgives him he forgives Odin after a while I think it's probably in Ragnarok or in Infinity War when he says I am Loki son of Odin <sighs> I would have never forgave Odin for that personally I just don't like Odin <laughs> he's horrible and Loki kind of tries to double cross them and then instead of facing repercussions for his actions he Let's go and drifts off into space. Then we see him again in Avengers, where he is leading the battle against New York. Now, I love him as like a just stone cold villain. I think that he is so chilling and fierce. And Tom Hiddleston does such a good job playing all of the like versions of Loki that we see because there were a lot. There's like the trickster, the homicidal maniac villain. The like, okay, I'm kind of in a comic mood and I'm just going to make fun of my brother, Loki. And then like the heroic, like, I saved my brother's life, Loki. Tom Hiddleston is amazing. And I love, 
I just, I loved Loki's arc. I loved how we never knew what was gonna happen, especially in like Thor the Dark World when he's like on his side, but not really, but then yeah, but then we don't know, and then yes. <laughs> um, I, I love the unexpectedness of him and just his like ego and his trickster vibes and just everything about him I've always loved. I thought his, he deserved better, I think. I think, spoiler alert, I think his death was, he deserved a more heroic one. Not that it wasn't heroic, but he just deserved more than that, I think. Um, so I still am a little hurt, Marvel, but at least we're getting a TV show. At least we're getting a TV show and I'm so excited. Okay, the moment you guys have been waiting for, I'm sure you probably guessed it, but number one, we have Tony Stark, Iron Man, played by Robert Downey Jr. I have always, okay, Iron Man obviously was the first kind of superhero movie I watched, um, alongside the like original Spider-Man movies, but like, I don't know. I, I liked them as a kid, but they did grip my love for superheroes. I watched Iron Man and I immediately fell in love with superhero movies. I have been watching them ever since. I... Tony Stark has one of the most fantastic character arcs I have ever seen, ever. Iron Man 1? He's kind of a jerk. He is a billionaire, playboy, philanthropist, and he is not really... A heroic type and that's what I love so much about him because at first it, it was personal to him like he escaped the cave and he sought revenge for his own personal needs okay but as his story continued he realized that he could help not only himself but so many people and I think that yeah he's made mistakes but like humans make mistakes and I think to be able to see him learn from his mistakes and guys his greatest fear is having all of the people he cares about die but he doesn't that is his greatest fear and I think that is so that reveals a lot about him that scene in Avengers Age of Ultron revealed so much about him because to see that as his fear is just wow it it really brings to your eye how much he cares about other people. He is not as self-centered as he puts off to be. And I just think that his arc is just glorious, especially with his like mentoring Peter and really being a leader and he didn't want to be. I mean, even in Avengers, I mean, he didn't want to team up with all these godly people, but he did and they ended up becoming his family and I just think he is such an amazing character endgame spoiler alert his death was the greatest thing that the MCU could have done I think that for him to be able to save the universe to save everyone he cares about just is what he wanted like the minute the second he knew what he was supposed to do he did not hesitate regardless of what he knew was gonna happen and I think that is the ultimate heroic notion was Doctor Strange gave him that one and he immediately knew what he has to do and what he has the power to do my god he was able to harness all five infinity stones without blowing into ash star lord could not even contain one and he is half like planet god hmm? come at me but iron man tony stark is more powerful than he is given credit for and i love him so much and he's my favorite character of all time i even have an iron man tattoo on my thigh anyway. <sighs> thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed my top 10 favorite characters. Um, I want to know your thoughts, your opinions. I know I said a lot, 
Um, so if you guys have any thoughts on what I said, any of these characters on your top 10 list as well, let me know down below. I appreciate all of your comments and I love reading them. I want to give a few character shout outs who were on my list but didn't end up making the top 10. We have Sarah Sanderson from Hocus Pocus, Ian Gallagher and Fiona Gallagher from Shameless, Bilbo Baggins from The Hobbit and Indiana Jones from Indiana Jones also Ron Weasley from Harry Potter. Um, so yeah, thank you guys again for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed me nerding out about my favorite character. Stay tuned for my next video and I hope you guys are doing wonderfully and thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe. Thanks guys.